I told you guys, we are back. I'm going to miss the big show. Welcome back. Our last show was called Unapologetics. I try to you know, jump from show to show to keep it kind of diversified so you guys can listen to what we're saying and, and what we're doing. We are sitting here with uh, Riverside RCC. D, trustee, Area 5 candidate, Daryl Terrell, and uh, Daryl gave a great, great conversation in the last hour. If you missed it, go ahead and tune in. Please share, like, and subscribe, if so be it, if you want to do that. Uh, A lot of uh, ballots that are already out there, you guys. Question, question, question. If you do not like the candidates on that ballot, number one, vote your interest. Not Donovan's interest, not Daryl's interest. Vote your interest, because Daryl's really biased. He wants you to vote for him no matter what. But you know, <laughs> do, you know, to do what you got to do, you know. But the thing is, let your voice be heard. Now, I'm one of those people that will tell you sometimes the best option, if you don't like the candidates, is just not to vote. Just sit it out. Don't participate. And this election cycle, it is very, very interesting to say the least, of some of the candidates that are running in some of the different elections. But let's get into it. Let's get into it. You know, Daryl, you know, welcome back to the second hour. Daryl, I'd super, I really do appreciate you taking the time to come out and, you know, let your voice be heard. Like I said, I see your signs uh, all over the place, you know, with that big smile and everything. And, you know, you're looking good, standing tall, and, and you're consistent. You know, you're consistent. You're a consistent a participant at uh, City Hall. Uh, question, did you see last night's city council meeting in the Moreno Valley. I saw the uh, videotape of the public comments because okay, I comments. was interested. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I was in Palm Springs uh, doing some stuff out there, so I did not make it. But I have always been one that said that there is no reason for me to come to city council meetings if the staff and the city uh, council members are doing their job. There's no, you know, I'm not going to just go in there and just yell and scream and just to do that. Yeah. I have other things to do in yeah. life, right? So, um, so what did you think about the meeting from, from what you did see? Because I heard it was a show, once again. It was too much division mm-hmm. in, in that in this in this um, in, in the chambers, and it's it's not only that it represents what's going on in the chamber, it represents what's going on in the city, and I think it it was the fact that this this division is going to stop progress for what we can do. Um, at, at RCC mm-hmm. because it affects every institution because if you have um, division mm-hmm. and you and people cannot get together for a reason we cannot move forward because it's too much it's too much hatred from one another um, well, well let me catch you off right yes. there okay the biggest problem that, that we're having in my opinion is okay everybody's going to have their, their differences of opinion you know, exactly. and we know that but the problem that I have with uh, and that's another reason why I'm kind of turned off because, like I said, I put six years into it. There, you put in at least almost twenty years of going to the city council mm-hmm. and and giving ideas and putting stuff out there. Yeah. But my, my my biggest problem is we're not getting city business done. It's more of a circus on a basis on a basis. If it isn't the council members. It's uh, myself and, you know, other people in there uh, causing ruckuses, developers, you know, things like that. You know, and the reason I put myself in there and I'm not going to point anybody else out because I don't think it's right of me to point other people out when I know that I also go down there and start clowning and doing what I'm doing. Yeah, Well, you have a point there because about doing the people's business is because people... uh, the city council meeting is there to take care of city business. That, mm-hmm. that means paving streets or means pay, uh, appropriating money. Right, paying and, bills. Right. And, and you want to have an image where you have business coming into this. You know, people, serious people came there to the council meeting to hear their projects or hear, you know, just a variety of issues that keeps the city running. And if you got all this other interference out there, distractions then that sets a bad precedent for for the business community out there. I mean, because citizens want want things to be done. Mm-hmm. And and that's city council meetings are a place where you do this city business takes place. Mm-hmm. People vote on on issue, vote on appropriations and mm-hmm. things like that. And and the the wheels have to keep going. But when you get all of a sudden you get slammed, mm-hmm. it becomes a circus 
then everything that's important gets lost in 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 the following. Everybody remembers what took place at the meeting, and a lot of business people who probably travel a lot of uh, a lot of miles way, right to come to come to a meeting and sit there and have to listen through all this before they can barely be heard. It kind of sends them. It, it sends a bad message to them. It's, just and generous to those people who come to the meeting because they hear, I'm here to do business. I'm not here for all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm here. I want to get get whatever it is and go back to and get get started what I need to do for the city. Right, and, and get things approved and, and yes, moving approved. forward. Yes. Um, but, but let me ask you this, and you okay. know, and, and it's been bothering me a lot. Okay, we had a power grab that happened in our city. You, yes. you know, you're, you're from Moreno Valley, just like myself, same yeah. district, you know, we're, we're, we're neighbors. Yes. How the hell is the city going to move forward when we won't even address a power grab by a candidate that is running for mayor who shouldn't be sitting, two council members shouldn't even be sitting on that dais until we get an understanding of what took place? Because at the end of the day, it was directed that they broke the law. A Brown Act violation occurred. And yet one of those people who was involved in a coup is running for mayor. How can you know we get to city business when citizens like myself, because I'm not going to let it die, yeah. I stand for the rule of law. The rule of law. Yes. I want an answer and an explanation to how two council members uh, illegally appointed a former council member and yet we're supposed to just sit back and act like the daisies are fresh? Come on. Well, it's like everything else. If it wasn't for the double the WLC wars, mm-hmm. then you got this coming. It's like well, we got more and more. It's just like we, we, we are shooting our own selves in the foot. Mm-hmm. And like you said, there needs to be transparency of what happened, uh, exactly what happened. Let the people... F- Read it for themselves. What exactly happened, and let's move on from this event. Correct. But if we continue to be distracted by these different things, the city will never move forward. We will be, we will continue to be in this civil war mm-hmm. because we are in the civil war. If it wasn't the WLC, it wasn't the recalls. It's this. It's, mm-hmm. it's a continuing cycle that we haven't learned from. And I think it has built more dissension and, and mistrust. And mistrust. And it's 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 like it's digging its claws into the foundation of our city. Because these these things that are happening it has a long a long term uh, ramifications of what people look at the city because it's getting worse. It's not getting better. Right. And and it has to end. But like you said, people are going to have the difference. But people want to think, they want to know is the truth and transparency. What happened? Let's get it out there and let's put it to rest. Let the chips fall where they lie. Yes. If some councilmen get recalled, so be it. You should never put yourself in that position yeah. because you were warned twice, three times that night. And you were there that night, there. Were no, you there? No, no, I think, no, I, no, no, I, I think I, you were there. Yeah, no, I think you were there. I heard, yeah. But, but the thing is, the city clerk addressed it, the city attorney addressed it, and members of the chamber of the of the city told them, don't do this, don't do this, this is what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And they did it anyway. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, you, you have a city attorney for a reason, mm-hmm. to advise you on city on city matters. Mm-hmm. And once we, when somebody like that tells you and they give you advice on, on things that that's, could put you in jeopardy, in jeopardy mm-hmm. that you shouldn't listen. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't just disregard it. Because even past city council city councils, people always listen to the city attorney about their advice because mm-hmm. that's, that's what you pay them for. They give you advice on, on issues related Legal to Legal issues so that we don't get sued. Right? Yeah, so you won't get sued. And, and I've never seen anything like this before. Mm-hmm. I hate to say that, but... but when someone like that tells you, here's, don't do it, you shouldn't do it. Just, hey, you know what? I'm listening to the advice of the city attorney, and I'm not going to do this. Right, you know. And, and put that be the end of it. Right, and, 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 and what is sad is they think that because we have a low education here in Moreno Valley, right? Yeah. Graduation rate. Yes. 
they think that we're all stupid. LaDonna Jimson just happened to be honeymooning and hanging out with her husband in the parking lot to be appointed like that. And the sad thing is, if they had just waited a week, the mayor would have returned. They would have had the majority and they could have moved forward from that point. Well, yeah. You know, and, you know, for everybody to sit there and say it's no different than what uh, the appointment of uh, uh, Mayor Gutierrez, that's BS because it was on the agenda. And they had a quorum. When he was removed, he was rightly removed because he didn't live in the district. So he was removed. He did step down off the council. He wasn't the mayor. Off the council. And he ran and he won the seat. Did I like the fact that he ran again and won the seat? We To me, it was like, that was a no-brainer to put this guy back up there. But they did. That's how democracy works, you guys. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm tying that in to tie it with this. When you get on the, the trustee board, you're going to have legal counsel as well. That's yeah. going to be advising, advising you guys. Um, in regards to legal counsel, for all the education and the smart things that you know and stuff, if advised by legal counsel, would you uphold and basically not adhere, but take into consideration what legal counsel is telling you? Yes, because like I said, like I said before, I mean, I'm there to make decisions, and I and and I, I'm not the smartest person when it comes to legal stuff. That's why you have um, attorneys and counsel to advise you about things because I'm smart enough to know that I don't know all the answers, mm-hmm. and and there's people smarter than me, so I listen to folks that know what they're talking about because that's what they've been trained to do. That's mm-hmm. what they went to school for. And and they give the best advice. Yeah, it's all yeah. smart enough to take their advice. Yeah, um, my understanding. I haven't really seen the whole tape because I've been super super busy dealing with, dealing with other candidates and stuff. It's just crazy what's going on here. But um, I believe uh, Ulysses Cribaris was moved to censure. They wanted to censure him, and they uh, that's going to be on the next agenda. They kicked that down the road for the next meeting, whatever, but it was put on the board yeah. to censure uh, Mr. Cabrera for, I'm not really sure what the reasons of his censure is, but, but you know, but, but, but again, I don't know the whole parameters of why he's being censored, Yeah. but here's a man running to be the mayor, and he's already involved in scandal. Now, back in the day when we were younger... Yeah. You would remember Gary Hart ran for president, yeah. and they had allegations that he was yeah. cheating on his wife. Presidency was over; his his run for president was over. We've got people now that are that are no matter what the scandal is, they're digging their their feet in and they're staying on the seat. I just cannot see. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want you guys to understand: either you're for the law, or you're not. It's just that cut and dry. I could abide by what the law says or what a judge says in a court of law. Period. You know, I might not like it, but I will abide by it. We just can't uh, run around here like we're, we're this uh, third world, Western, Adolf Hitler, dictator type, brown shirt, black shirt, Mussolini type country. And just let strong men and women come in and run roughshod over us like they're the leaders. Ladies and gentlemen. You've got to unlearn what you've learned. In a democracy, a representative government, you are the boss. Daryl Terrell is running to be a servant. A servant. He's not running to be a leader. He's running to be a servant. He wants the job to serve the people. That means he must listen to what we ask him to do. Yes. But... Because we are a republic, he needs to make the best decision that he think is right. But that does not make him a leader. He is a servant. We have given him the power to work in our name. He is doing an interview right now with you, the listener, the boss, the one that's going to pay the bills. This is how it works. I need you guys to unlearn what you've learned. Somehow, Daryl, somewhere across the, the middle... We elect these people and we say, look at our leaders. They're not leaders. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I agree because you, you, when, you, when you're elected and the people put the trust in you, you serve the people who put you. You serve the people, um, your community. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's a community, mm-hmm. that's what you serve. The state or whatever. The state, state, whatever. And you listen to folks. Like I said, you, you're smart enough to listen 
to what people say. Mm-hmm. You listen to advice. You listen to opposing sides, then you mm-hmm. you make a decision mm-hmm. based on on the, the facts. Variety, mm-hmm. on the facts. What people tell you, the what staff says, what people or opposing views mm-hmm. say, then you have to make the final choice, okay. and that's what. Uh, a public official should do. Should do. So, and, and you know, and I, I'm glad we, we, we kind of transitioned into that. So, here you are, you're a trustee representing Moreno Valley. Yes. I'm a student, and let's just hypothetically say, okay, I'm a dreamer. Yes. And, and my cats are fighting. So, if you guys hear that, I come to you and I say, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a, a legal limbo. You know, um, I don't, you know, I'm kind of really afraid to be here because I don't want to be identified. There's a lot of dreamers out there that don't want to be identified, you know, specifically that they're dreamers. Nobody's running around with a yeah. big thing on their forehead saying, hey, I'm a dreamer. Mm-hmm. But I come to you on, on, on that thing and I'm, I'm giving you every reason why um, I need help or we need support in regards to our status here as a student. Mm-hmm. And... Um, what what would you do in a situation like that when when you have students who you know and I'm not saying students don't matter yeah. but 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 they do they they yeah. really do because a lot of people self fund their education. Well, you know, for me, you know, Daryl, if people know me, Daryl, Terrell, I, I care about people. Mm-hmm. Now, if a, a dreamer comes comes um, before me and they need my help, I'm gonna do first of all, I'm gonna tell that dreamer, you know. I understand you you you're you know, fearful because you don't know yeah. what's going to which happen, way it's going to go which way it's go. But as a trustee, it's my duty to do everything legally to help you, mm-hmm. and that and that for us to make sure you have the resources you need while you're waiting. Yeah, while you're waiting, and and to ensure that you we we're not going to be in limbo. We're going to keep going forward. Mm-hmm. So. When you out of limbo, that that you have everything you need to keep moving forward. But right. that goes on to other people, to all people, all people. Mm-hmm. that that needs my help. Right, African or you, it, got, it, you know yeah. whatever you, you know demographic yeah. that comes here. Um, but, because I just because we we're in a unique situation where we have dreamers out there that just don't know what their future is going to be. So they they well, a they, lot of them are, are you know. I'm going to cut you off, yeah, but a lot of them go back into the shadows because they are so fearful yeah. of, uh, you know, being targeted as, yes. you know, and, you know, I'm not saying it's embar- it shouldn't be embarrassing, but to some of it is. It's an embarrassing thing because you're not really a citizen, but you've been here all your life. But uh, my thing is this, God forbid, because to me, these people are American, no matter how you look at it, whatever. Uh, God forbid a radical, democratic, Republican, whatever gets in there and they rule against these dreamers and they send them back. If we're going to send them back, at least they're going to go back with a two-year degree, not wasting any time and taking that degree back with them wherever they go. You know, yeah. you know, it's, it's stupid to say, oh, they're all going to go back to Mexico. No, they might go to Canada. They might go to Europe. They might go wherever they're going to do. But the point is, you know, if, if, if that way out scenario ever happened, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and, that, and, and that's the thing because a lot of, Young people that I talk to, and some of them I know that are dreamers in my neighborhood, Edgemont, yeah. by the way, <laughs> for you mm-hmm. guys that are, are, may, might be new. Uh, some of these people are dreamers, and these young people are dreamers, and they do worry about those things. And I told them, you know what? That is still no excuse for you not to get a better education. Yeah. And the resources will be there. Well, yeah, that's I, and and that's the thing as a trustee I would do for, like I said, not only for dreamers, but to, to ensure that the folks that are who are listening out there, the students out there, they're knowing that, you know, Daryl Terrell is going to be your champion. He's mm. going to fight for you. He's going to stand up for you. He's going to be your voice. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. I'm mm. going to do whatever I can legally to ensure that you continue to get your education, to continue to get the resources you need. And so you know that you should, you you have somebody that got your back. Mm. Absolutely. And I will do everything I humanly possible can do. And that goes for any other student out there that who who's who lives in fear that they they don't have the resources. Mm-hmm. If it means you graduating from from RCC, from Reno Valley College or whatever college you graduate for, Norco, that if you can't afford it's not it's nothing to be ashamed about if you can't afford something. Mm-hmm. But we have to do as as a trustee 
is to make sure, work with the foundation to make sure that people that don't have gowns and caps, mm -hmm. they could, to give them the 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 uh, caps and gowns they need so they can walk that out. Right, because you know, I, I really think when the accomplishment, now I have 12 degrees. I've been to nine of my graduations and I go to all of them because you work so hard and at the end of it not to participate in that graduation ceremony. It's just a pat on the back for what hard work you've done and the sacrifices you made. Because how did you feel when, when, when you got your, your, your first two-year diploma from RCC before you transferred? To Shoot, I was like, I was so blown away because... You're like, this opens doors for well, me. Well, yeah, because, you know, first of all, I didn't even know you can get a... Uh, you, so you, you graduate. Mm -hmm. You can walk that out. Right, right. And I was like so excited. I'm like, geez, like, yeah, I you did it. it. Well, yeah, you I did, did it. it. Mm -hmm. All that hard work. And and that's where we say we go back to, like I said, the dreamers. Mm -hmm. there, there, was folks, there are folks out there that, you know, you see their parents who, who came here mm -hmm. and they make a better life for their son children, or daughter. Their children. Mm -hmm. and, and they see, they stand up there and they be proud and so see proud. that person. So proud that they're going to be, you know, that their kids have a better chance of living yeah, that exactly. American dream. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, as a trustee, you know, Daryl would do this for them to make sure that they have those opportunities and have those resources and do everything humanly possible to make sure that they could they could make that dream a reality. And so their parents could sit there and say, you know what? We did all that sacrifice for our little boy or mm -hmm. little girl to walk that out and and, and create another pathway to some in, into society. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and, yeah. the, and the good thing about that, Daryl, I'm glad that, that you're going to be a champion for them because I don't want these kids thinking that, oh, I have to wait until a decision is made by Washington. Um, President Obama signed the DREAM Act over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And these kids are still in limbo. You know, I mean, you know, because of the uh, Supreme Court, yeah. so they're taking their time doing it. And I don't want these kids to sit there because there's a lot of them that think like this. Well, I don't want to, you know, put in these resources and go to school only to be shipped out or shipped back out. No, Daryl's going to make sure yeah. you, while you're waiting until we get the word. Yes. And nine times out of ten, you're going to get the word that you, that you're here to stay. That, but. You're not wasting any time. You know, we don't want exactly. these kids wasting their time. You exactly. don't. You don't want to be 30 years old talking about. Well, I'm still waiting to be a dreamer. You know, I'm well, still waiting to dream. A, yeah, that's what you remember. When we talked about Mill Valley College meeting the challenge in our community. Yes, absolutely. This is the thing we do. Mill Valley College can do is to help our, our dreamers mm -hmm. and help the dreamers to make sure they get the resources. And not only the dreamers, but other folks. Who out there who come from other countries, ensure that you get the resources too. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be left behind. We're right. gonna make sure that you guys at Marino Valley College and the RCC district will be your champion. Because Daryl Terrell will be your champion and he will do anything humanly possible, legally possible to ensure that you have those resources. Yeah, exactly. And I really do think we need to increase the funding at EOPS, which benefits everybody. Yes. You know, so... Um, more resources. More resources for those guys. But speaking of resources, you know, and, and if you're a student, please like, share, and subscribe and get, and get the message out here for those guys that if this is your interest to vote for somebody who's going to look out for your interest, Daryl Terrell is that candidate. He is that candidate. So we're going to stay on the student topic. And what I'm going to talk about right now is I'm an alumni myself. I would love to rock Moreno Valley because I, I attended a class there. Failed, by the way. <laughs> I failed the class there, by the way. But I did attend. Okay. I just failed the course. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. But I would love to rock Moreno Valley gear, uh, Norco gear, RCC gear. But here's the problem. You go in there and I want a sweatshirt because it's getting cold right now. What is the greatest advertisement for any organization, advertisement, right? You know, yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, exactly. Get, getting it out there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I love. I, I would love being an alumni, just like you see the little license plates on cars. Yeah, and I, I love reading license plates on cars because you can see where they're from or whatever. Yeah, you know, uh, and I hear this from a lot of students. They would love to rock the RCC sweat gear or the RCC uh, pens and, and books and notebooks yeah. and stuff, but it's not competitive to going to Walmart and get generic notebook paper, pens, and stuff like that, but especially when it comes to the clothing. Yes. It, it's not affordable. So, I mean, if you were a trustee, because I hear this from all the students, because you, okay. you ask them, you say, well, what school do you go to? Oh, I go to Moreno Valley. 
But they got sweats on. But see, they're wearing different sweats. Whereas, they, yeah. you know, you know, kids like yeah. to wear that stuff. Yeah. They yeah. like to represent. Yeah. You know. I yeah. mean, so you know, what what could we possibly do to get the prices? more feasible can, can we give a rebate to the students can we do something because i i get it all the time these kids want to rock that gear well first of all we got to find out why it's so high uh-huh. see that's the first because thing i don't think that gear is moving i mean it's very well, rare if it's if it's not yeah because like i said if you i would love to see catch up I, I would love to give like graduation gifts that come from their school you you know but i don't want to go and pay 60 dollars just to give yeah. them a, a t-shirt yeah, and that's the thing about it. Where is this money going? You know, when you think about it, you know, as I get as a trustee, you know, you have to think about things like the little small things. Mm-hmm. You have to think about why you want community pride, you want college pride, but people mm-hmm. are not wearing the gear, like right. you said, rocking the gear because it's too high. Mm-hmm. Now we got to find out why is it too, too high? high. Now the thing is, like you were suggesting, a rebate or some kind of. Uh, maybe a great incentive if you you know maintain a two point what or two point well, five or something you can get a ten percent discount twenty percent discount. Well, yeah, I think you you have to you have to incentivize to because I want a shirt, damn it. Yeah, if I you know if I like you said if I have this shirt that is like I got it from Walmart or yeah, whatever it's for generic, yeah. like five bucks, yeah. then uh, then you go to uh, Reno Valley College and the shirt is like. Like seventy, eighty bucks. Why yeah. would I buy a shirt like that? And so, community. Right. right. I love my school, but right. I'm not gonna pay no eighty dollars for my right. shirt. And, you know, and unfortunately, even though you live in the rich city of Myrtle Valley, and it is rich, don't let anybody tell you it's not. If Myrtle Valley was not a rich city, developers wouldn't be here buying politicians. Trust me, that's a fact. Okay. So, but unfortunately, some of us got parents like I had yeah. that ain't gonna spend no thirty, forty dollars for a. a you know, gym shirt and some shorts, you know, like, like right now. Okay. You guys can't see right now. I'm wearing San Bernardino Valley college shorts. Yeah. I'll SB, see them all. SBVC. Yeah. These shorts cost me on sale. Got it on sale. Shorts. Okay. $16. $16? But I, $16. But I got it on sale. Okay. I had to wait for the sale to go. Yeah. And, and, and I rock this everywhere I go, yeah. you know, because you know, everybody from the Inland Empire knows what SBVC stands for. If you've been here long enough. Yeah. But I want to rock RCC gear and I can't because I, you know, I just refuse to pay that kind of money. Well, I think any, any right-minded person would refuse. But see, <laughs> but the thing is, then you you have an issue at the, you know, at the place. Why is it, why is it so high? And that, that, that bothers the mind why things are high, but I don't know what goes into the cost, but... It doesn't mean it has to still be that high. There has to be a way. Well, I mean, well it could be high. Why can't we just give them a rebate? That's what I'm saying. It, okay, let it stay high. Is there something that's, that you as a trustee will can and will do or suggest well, to, to incentivize our students wearing Moreno Valley College gear? Because you know what? That's a recruitment tool to bring more students to the school. Well, yeah. And, and if we want to talk about community pride, mm-hmm. uh, Mount Lion Pride at Marino Valley College Absolutely. or any that we we have to support the gear. We have to support. It. I like to walk around with a with a mountain lion shirt on mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But I'm not going to spend a gazillion dollars for a mm-hmm. shirt. Do, do you know what's crazy? What's that? You can go to Walmart on Day Street right now, which is Riverside, and you can get a Marino Valley Viking shirt for nine dollars. Nine dollars. Nine dollars. Marino Valley Vikings. Sure, at a Walmart. At a Walmart. At the Walmart off Day Street in Canyon see, Canyon Springs Parkway. But see, that's the thing. They see Walmart is competing with the with the. Uh, but that's smart. Yeah, it is. It's smart. But that's a high school. But yeah, but see, the thing is though, it, like you say, you you have a you have a, a bookstore where you have a lot of items that rock and uh, nice, mountain lion. very nice stuff. Yeah, but if they're too high, then we have to do something. The way as, as a trustee, I say Daryl Terrell, sure, trust as a trustee, we like you said, we have to come up with some incentives like rebates or or ten percent discount or whatever it is it takes to, to get those students to yeah. rock and advertise yeah. the schools. Yeah, because like you said, it brings it brings pride to the community. Mm-hmm. Because if you could walk around in Marino Valley and see people wearing God, they got a mm-hmm. mountain lion shirt on, you right. know. Right. Where is that from? Mm-hmm. Marino Valley Cop. I didn't know you had a college. Oh, man, when I graduate, I'm going to go over there myself. Well, yeah, but but Mm -hmm. like you were saying, you don't know. Like, remember we were talking about earlier about how do we, uh, Moreno Valley College can, you know, about the social life. Uh But it also starts with pride. Yes. And if you, you know, if people say, I would love to wear it, but it's too Mm -hmm. hard, then let's do something about it. Because Mm -hmm. like you said, it's it's the greatest advertisement you could could do. Is that community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it's where where the gear mm-hmm. or have the the books, the pens are, are more affordable. And and then you think about it as a student, it cuts down on you having to wear a certain wardrobe because you're wearing the school gear. Exactly. Yeah. And you're showing pride because you walk around with a you walk. It's like when I went to when I went to UCR, I see people walking around with UCLA. I said, wait a minute, <laughs> you in UCR? Why are you not wearing no um, UCR, UCR shirt and um, all this stuff? And the first thing they say, they say, well, it's too expensive, you know. Mm-hmm. It's expensive, but, you know, when, when I was at the Senate and I uh, was a student leader at, at um, UCR, we did something about it. We we worked with the bookstore to make it more affordable, but here's, here's what else we did. We created our own store. Yeah. I'm we created an ASUCR store. That's something that we had a lot to do with, and we had our own, you know, students have to think outside of the box. Well, the bookstore is high. Then right. maybe we'll put your we'll put your brain trust in creating your own store. There you go. For those of you guys that are taking business courses right at, at Moreno Valley High School, maybe at RCC itself. Create your uh, own store. Create your own store, and you undercut the bookstore by so, so that's go, what we did. So go and order your own T-shirt makers and stuff, and start doing that. You know, yeah. doing those printing. That's that's what we did at um. um wait, at wait, wait! No, don't take that idea. I think I'm going to do that. But go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, but but no, but that's what we did when we faced with that same kind of problem. We started our own. That's called the. It was called the the C. The let me see the C store. It, it was the ASCCR student store. We started our own student own store. store. Store, and you start, and then people started yeah, rocking we, that we, gear. We, people yeah. started rocking that gear. Yeah, we start buying. We start producing our own stuff, wow. like um, UCR shirts, mm-hmm. sweatshirts, hats. Mm-hmm. You name it. We were doing our stuff. Yeah, we had our own student store. Man, we rocked it because, like I said, we didn't want to set up. Like you were saying, we tired of buying expensive stuff over there. So what we did, start our own student store. Right, right. You know, I mean, because think about it. I remember going through school, and I, you know, I love this little reminiscence session between alumni. Yeah. Um, I remember getting my books and stuff and, you know, you know, begging when I had to beg. And um, I would be in the bookstore getting the book for the class that I could afford. And I would see a hat or a shirt, and I really wanted it, but it wasn't within my budget. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and it's just, you know, I just had to be disciplined enough to say, well, even though I want it, I can't get it. You know, we should have some kind of incentive that, that kind of rewards the kids. Let's say, okay, I mean, golly, the book is over $100. But, you mean to tell me you guys can't give me a shirt? But see, that's why, that's why I say, you know, students in situations for you guys at ASNVC, I tell you guys, the first thing you guys, you, well, Mr. President, if you're out there listening, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> This is what you do. Create your own student store. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just being real about right. it because that's what we did at UCR. Right, right. But but but, but I but, see what you're saying yeah. about the center stuff. But, but, but you know what I mean? You know, if I see all these students coming in, it's the first, it's the fall. It's the first, you know, the yeah. new year's coming up. Everybody's excited. They, a lot of these new students are from the high schools. Yeah. Canyon Springs, yeah. Moreno Valley. They're all going to the college. Yeah. They're still in the same city, which is a great thing. Yeah. Okay, and they're getting their books, and they're spending a lot of money on the books and at your register for the class. We should be able to give these guys some. Like, you know, we, you know, we want you to rock a shirt, you know, as an well, incentive. It, yeah, to, we, yeah, I, I agree. We could do something where this is a sale, like you said before, to get to maybe get hand out hats. Yeah, something. or or yeah, to advertise because yeah, advertise. We, we do it in the military. You know, like when you go to the recruiter, what's the first thing they give you? Pins. Yeah. Lanyards. They give you all kinds of. Just, just take this with it. you. you. Just, just take. Yeah. It, you know? And I, I think you know we should do something like that because then that also makes the kid kind of excited to be there. Like, wow, this is pretty different. Because, hey, yeah, man. yeah, I agree. Yeah, stuff like that. Cause yeah, give give away. You know, give away shirts and hats mm-hmm. and pins. You and, know, and, and and even though the school's taking a, a monetary loss, is it? In what you get back and, and free advertising. Well, yeah, because you have to look at what you invest. Because if you give out so think about the returns uh, multifaceted because you have more people, uh, students who may want to come there because they did not know Marino Valley College exists. Right. But or, now they do because they see somebody. Yeah. Well, where's Marino Valley right. College? Or, 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 Off of the south. Yeah. Or, 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 or let's say I'm working on Amazon and I didn't finish my Marino Valley yeah. curricular course because life took me in a different pattern. I yeah. had to go. I had a baby and I had to go support my baby yes. and my, you know, girlfriend or whatever the yeah. situation is. And I'm still rocking my Moreno Valley shirt, even though I didn't complete my degree, I was an alumni. I was there. Yeah, exactly. I'm still wearing the shirt. Exactly. Free that's, advertising. Well, that's how you commit that's how you create the uh the community spirit. Well, I, I right. mean trying right. to link because if you start seeing people in the city 
regular folks who, who alumni like us mm-hmm. wearing shirts mm-hmm. because this is UCR had their own community. Reno Valley College has its community mm-hmm. in Reno in the city of Reno Valley. So why not advertise that we went there mm-hmm. or students that's going there walking around with a mountain lion shirt on? Right. Say, hey, I go to Reno Valley College. Right, exactly, and and that gives. Reno Valley itself uniqueness. A, a uniqueness it makes it a college town like right, right. because who are you never think of you think of college towns like the UCLA's the mm-hmm. Michigan Santa the, Barbara University yeah, exactly but the community college doesn't have that kind of spirit but we can do something about it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like you're saying rocking the shirt rocking the, the, the sweats, just sweats. The, the pants the, yeah. the shorts yeah, yeah. And, and people walking around said that guy they didn't know how many people know that Reno Valley College even exists yeah here? you know because the funny thing today when I was walking in my gear and I came from the base gym yeah. cause I, you know I wear a lot of military yeah. stuff but yeah. they were like you went to the valley I was like yeah. I said yeah they go you didn't go to Reno Valley I said yeah I did but I didn't graduate from Reno Valley I graduated from RCC but I said I also went to Valley because I was in the aviation program the aviation. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and do you see how the conversation yeah. starts and the person was like I didn't know they had an aviation program and it's a free advertising yeah. thing because even though I live in Moreno Valley, I had to go to San Bernardino Valley to pursue what I wanted to do. Exactly. Versus whatever. And I think that can work in reverse. That's just well, as well. Well, yeah, because like you said, you know, the conversation. So, oh, you have that. So it's like mm-hmm. somebody saying, oh, you went to Moreno Valley College? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I went there. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they had there. And then, like you said, it, it creates other yeah. uh, conversations. Yeah, it, just, it leads into other conversations yeah. and mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. So, I, so I, I'm going to strongly recommend that when you get on that board, that you keep that in mind. And, and if you don't, I'll remind you. You know I will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, but you have a point there because community colleges are not known to be like like college rah, towns. Rah, right, rah, rah. It's just a it's a college there that you go yeah. and get you learn how to be get your generals out of general. the way and then transfer. Yeah, yeah, but see we could change see here again. Be innovative people. Mm-hmm. Innovative, thinking outside of the box, pragmatic, just mm-hmm. like what Donovan said. It doesn't take a PhD to know this kind of Albert stuff. Albert Einstein, yeah. But yeah, because if you went to a college like I went to UCR, mm-hmm. people you were in a college town. Why not? Reno Valley become a college town when it comes to community colleges, right, right. because we have a, we have a college here. We have a, a great at, um, asset um, asset here, mm-hmm. Reno Valley College. We could we could transform and break, like you were saying, so, um, social social uh, gatherings and, and parties and things like that. Mm-hmm. But Reno Valley College, Reno Valley, the city of Reno Valley, and Reno Valley College could work together to. Do a different kind of branding. Right, right. Because we, we we haven't seen that branding right, right. before. And, and you got to think about this. Who also rocks uh, gear, college gear? Mom and dad. Yeah. Grand, especially the grandparents. They're oh, yeah. Everything like that. You know, they love the college gear, seeing their grandbaby go yeah. to a certain school. And, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, they started here and then they transferred. You know? Yeah, when I saw somebody at, uh, where was it? Uh, where I work at, mm-hmm. people are always rocking like UCR. Mm-hmm. I'm a they proud. Uh, yeah. I'm a graduate. Uh, I'm a proud parent of yeah, a graduate. grandparent of a yeah. Yeah, graduate. but like we could translate that and use that kind of branding model. What we see and translate that into Reno Valley College mm-hmm. and start doing a new branding with see the city of Reno Valley and, mm-hmm. and Reno Valley are working together to make a new type of branding. Right. I, a know. community college town. Right. And, and and I think that would incentivize even residents in Riverside to come to take classes here in Reno Valley. Yeah, exactly. Because you you are the best inv- ambassador by sporting a Reno Valley College shirt. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I I I've, I've lived here a long time, Daryl. You've lived here a long yeah. time. I don't see anybody rocking Reno Valley gear. No, I don't I haven't seen anybody. I mean I haven't seen, yeah. You know, to be I, honest, I, I haven't seen. I, I barely see people. The only time I really see people rocking RCC gear, City College, is when I'm at the campus. Yeah, at you the know, campus. It's very rare. You know, I might see them at the mall very rarely, but you don't really see it. But, but, but that's but, what. But damn sure, I don't see Moreno Valley College. Well, there, that's all. that's what I'm saying. Because see, the city of Moreno Valley could do a lot to make to make this a more a community college town mm-hmm. is is working together with Reno Valley College. Like you said with the shirts, the branding of shirts and things. Cause that brings more economic to the um, city of Reno Valley. Yeah. Absolutely. When you when you think about it, because you have access you're showcasing your most powerful asset uh, asset, your college. Mm. Not warehouses, but your college. 
Reno Valley College is an asset that should be spotlighted and that, that the uh, city working together could do something and maybe helping with the prices of of, of the, uh, like you said, gear or mm-hmm. shirts and and yeah. hats and whatever. Yeah, you know, and, and kids love to dress up, especially the girls. Now, you know, uh, the girls love wearing the pink. You know, I, I just want to see them to start having all that but, stuff going on. And, and look at Skechers. See, you right. got Skechers, Skechers over there. Skechers over there. They can yeah, well, yeah, you can put, you can find ways to put Merino Valley gear, Merino Valley college gear into Skechers. They can have Skechers um, going down the thing there. Three D printing. You could have Merino Valley uh, college shoes, and I mean, you could do all kinds of yeah. stuff in the technical age. Box. But, but see, but see, here's here's again. We've been more pragmatic about stuff. Mm-hmm. We're meeting challenges in the community. That's what I'm saying. We're not theorizing things, but we could put theory into practice. Practice, right. and, and that's the thing about being a trustee that I will do. You know, Daryl Terrell will think outside of the box. Just like what we're talking about today, there could be different ways of making Reno Valley College a powerful partner in this community mm-hmm. where people... Well, no, oh, Reno Valley College. Yeah, I saw this guy walking down the street with a um, mountain lion shirt on, and, right, right. and and he got some socks, and he got a. I mean, it, it creates conversation, yeah, and, and, and maybe we can do uh, a better advertising in Reno Valley in regards to signs and uh, outsourcing signs, the digital signs, like down at UCR, yeah. and just buy a you know a monthly whatever they do to buy the the advertising. Well, of it. yeah, yeah, because, because was, the only signs you see in Reno Valley is like. Moreno Valley High School with the arrow going over here off the highway. You oh, you I mean? see a marijuana place. Yeah, yeah. Sign off the, <laughs> but see, it was, but you, you, you tapped into something because, again, mm-hmm. these billboards, mm-hmm. Real Valley College, you know, a sign that says, you know, express Moreno Valley's a motto or theme mm-hmm. or you could go to class extended learning and stuff on these billboards sure. that's leading into the city or leading out to the mm-hmm. city. But but it shows that Reno Valley College, instead of like you're saying, a map uh, thing saying go this way to right. Reno Valley College. Yeah, right. That's how you see. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. if we could work with these um these billboard companies to have advertisement mm-hmm. of Reno Valley College. Because mm-hmm. I haven't seen any Or work with the city yeah. to make the signs. We we make exactly. our own signs. Yeah, so. exactly. But we could do a lot more than what right. we're doing cool. than just go here to Reno mm-hmm. Valley College. Right, because I, I'll I'll be honest. Um you know, when we, when Myrtle Valley College came into existence, it was still technically RCC. Yeah, it an was. An extension of RCC. Yeah. Just like Norco was when they first started. Yeah. They branched out. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, to be honest, do not know Myrtle Valley has college. They really don't. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's the biggest, most powerful asset that we have. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it, like it, it's, it, it's a big selling point. Yeah, it's economic mobility. If you mm-hmm. want to move up the ladder, go to Myrtle Valley College. Mm-hmm. We'll make sure that you have... Mm-hmm. The skill, marketable skills you need, so you can have a little bit of a weight job in the community. Right, right. See, but just like you said, though, we we thinking outside of the box. We're being pragmatic. Oh my God, how dare we? Yeah, <laughs> but well, why we why we just sit there and, and say oh? Mm-hmm. But that's what we have to do. See, the thinking, like I said, Daryl Terrell as a trustee, we ensure that we we look at things like what, what me and Dad. This is what I'm talking about of dreaming things Big. that never were. Right. Or dreaming, of looking at, looking over the horizon for things we never thought about. Mm-hmm. This is, we're just having this conversation, you know, sparked, that sparked idea. a lot mm-hmm. of ideas out of our brains mm-hmm. of how we can brand Reno Valley College and bring community pride back. Community pride, maybe bring the city together versus exactly. all the drama that goes on at the city council. Yeah, and yeah. this this is the, a point that Reno Valley College can unify mm-hmm. the community. Right. You know, uh, real quick before we go, we got a minute left. I just want to say this: Could you imagine going to city council meeting, seeing? Uh, Louise Palomares in a Moreno Valley College shirt. You know what I mean? Supporting yeah. that and seeing uh, who would be the opposition of, of uh, Louise Palomares. Uh, Roy would have a shirt yeah. on different days and stuff. I would have a shirt yeah, on different days. Exactly. And you're saying, even though we're on opposite sides of issues, we have one thing in common. We all live here in the Moreno Valley and we all support the school for our children. Yeah. We love our community. We love our community. Exactly. And yes. I, I think that would be a great thing. So Daryl Terrell, uh, next week, same time, same place. Daryl Terrell's running for District 5, Area Trustee 5, RCCD. He is the only candidate you should be marking on that ballot. He's the only one that's got ideas. He's the only one that's been talking to you guys directly. I have not heard anything from Dr. Thin in regards to publicly, but I could be wrong. I'm not just trying to 
dog her out. But Daryl Terrell, please continue to uh, give us these ideas. And when you win the election, let us know where the party's at. Yes, probably be, <laughs> I don't know, we just probably be, oh, you won. Oh, thank God, yeah. man. Thank God. God is beautiful. Gotcha. See you guys again.